Lou Garmer, alcoholic. Good evening, everyone. What a pleasure and a joy to be celebrating this one day sober with you. Rocky, crazy for you. Dinner on Lexington Avenue and always to be remembered and the meeting down at um, 70th Street, I think it was. Thank you, thank you. And uh, Ali, thanks for the call about a month ago. I just uh, overjoyed and honored to be included here again at the meeting and uh, just uh, thank God for the day sober and to try to understand what 11th step is about. I, You've gotten the last guy in the world here who knows anything about it. <laughs> I just don't know. But that doesn't mean I won't try to share a little something. And uh, thanks. Thanks for the opportunity to be of service today. My sobriety date, by the grace of God, and that's for sure, actions taken in the program, November 11th, 1989. Armistice Day and the war was over. <laughs> And so very, very thankful for that. And uh, my home group is Monday night, Culvertown, Kentucky, just up the road here, four minutes. We had a just a wonderful bang up gather of the tribe last night uh, and uh, read from, as Bill sees it, uh, topic of uh, complacency and keeping sobriety above the horizon as a real piece of business, which is certainly my, intention for this one day and uh, why wouldn't it be it's the greatest thing that ever happened to me i speak to you from the music room at the abbey of gethsemane the site of many what we like to call bootleg a a meetings uh, people who come here to the abbey uh, many of them friends of bill it's like there's a magnet out the end of our driveway that draws fobs here all the time and so uh, so we gather here and we have a lot of great spirit here in the music room and uh, that just continues to dazzle and amaze me. The connections, the connections, the building of the tribe, so to speak, a world of understanding and compassion and encouragement and love and fellowship like I never ever dreamed, couldn't imagine, couldn't imagine how it would ever be my story. So here to Thank God from the bottom of my heart for the gift of alcoholism. And of course, all that went with it, all that it took to get me here to your meeting tonight. And um, especially the recovery, of course, of course, the greatest day at a time deal of my life, the daily reprieve. And this old boy is just rocketing with it, um, dazzled, amazed, high energy by nature, I suppose, that has just exploded in sobriety is just so unencumbered and eager to be part of this one day's miracle reprieve, to give back, to be part of, to be God's agent, spearhead of the advancing creation and so on. It's just my fondest dreams come true. I am 73 years old. I have been at the Abbey for three and a half months. Oh, and 50 years. <laughs> so I really, Though I've been around, my sense of everything that happens is just for today, just today. I just got started. There's only now. I am not sitting on any bank account of spirituality, experience, strength, and hope. I could never dream of speaking from a spiritual hilltop or high on the high on the plane or any kind of status as a monk or a member of Alcoholics Anonymous. To me, that is laughable, it's just unthinkable. And it certainly isn't my story. So I try to speak from my truth and, and be the real me, so to speak, as much as I can be. And uh, so my story is one of 73 years of yearning, yearning for the infinite, whatever that gift God gave me at the be beginning of consciousness, at the beginning of my life, has been eating my soul, driving my soul, enlivening my soul for these 73 years now, brought me to a monastery, brought me to Alcoholics Anonymous. And I could just shout for joy at the whole thing coming together now, I suppose, I hope, in the evening of life. The evening of life where I don't have anything to prove. I don't have anything to make happen. I don't have to set anybody straight. 
and I have everything to enjoy in the spirit. And so I want that to be the story of my life. And I ask God to make that my story, to make my life his song. I have, I have song in me. I've been the choir master here at the Abbey for 20 years. And um, that gift of song translates into everything in my days anymore. The, the harmonies, the, oh, shall we say off, off notes, the yeah, occasional dissonance and so on. It's all a beautiful song. And I'm just thrilled to pieces to have a small voice in the great universe of praise today. So I'm sober and I'm living the dream, active member of Alcoholics Anonymous, have a sponsor, just spoke to him before the meeting tonight. I sponsor guys. I attend meetings frequently. I'm, I'm on it. I'm on it. It's above the horizon and, and hardly anything like complacency from me. So what drives me? What, what is the gas, so to speak? What is the engine? What is the fuel? What makes sobriety glisten like gold for me? It's the obvious, just as the book suggests for me, it's claiming the power. I have to claim the power. And that suits me very well, friends, because that is the truest expression of what I need to do and the truest expression of who I am. Who I am, God's kid, needy, poor, kind of lost without the power. And I feel a great ease and comfort in, in sharing that with you and, and just telling you, I, I live in this beautiful place and I'm sober and, but I, it's about counting on God's grace on a daily basis from the place of my emptiness and my need and, and counting on him and and being sober, being confident that the grace will continue to flow. What I need to do, so to speak, is invite the Almighty in. There's a wonderful um, Southern author from Mississippi, William Faulkner, you may have read him in high school, who suggests that God is a Kentucky gentleman. And when you live in Kentucky, you know that's really saying something indeed. Faulkner explains that that's to say that God does not come where he is uninvited. He does not stay where he's unwelcome. And I like to add, because Faulkner didn't think of it, that uh, he's dying for the invitation. So I'm here with the big empty on a daily basis. What I did yesterday in sobriety, super fantastic. I mean, lots of contacts, building the community at my home group and so on, speaking to newcomers. I'm there at the home group early. I stay till the last shot is fired. But today I woke up empty. All of that uh, cancel check, so to speak. And I'm needy and poor again. So what do I do? I follow the instructions that you great people have encouraged me to do. If it's past midnight and I'm awake, then I ask God to direct my thinking because it is a new 24. I need to start over again. This is not a burden to me or a chore. It is an absolute delight and thrill that I get to call on my father once again, knowing darn well that he's ready and eager to come charging in to my life, to my world, and to fill this 24, the only thing that really concerns me, with wonderful opportunities to serve, to grow, to become, to give back, and so on. I just have to open my heart. And so I do that. I ask him to direct my thinking. And uh, I renew steps one, two, and three immediately. I don't get up. I don't do anything as much as I call on the power. I claim the power. And so admitting that I'm shot to pieces and needy and need to come to believe again, need to turn all of this over. And I feel like I am waking up. 
I am slipping out of the trance of sleep, the trance of indifference, the trance of disconnect. And I am contacting the power again. Contact the power. You know, the big book, so it's just this magical. I read it every day. I keep copies here in my office, uh, in my sleeping quarters upstairs, in my bench in the refectory, so I can dip into the power every time that that book offers me. And it tells me that um, to stand in the power is to stand in the presence of infinite love, in the presence of infinite love. And that gives me an energy. It gives me a purpose, a mission, it gives me a rocket launch into this one day. The book tells me I can be absolutely certain the creator has entered my heart and my life in a way that is miraculous because I'm calling upon him. I'm inviting him in. Please, God, come in. I have nothing, but I want to be your guy sober today in action. And so I'm inviting you in. I'm pleading with you. I have um, what the book also encourages me to um, claim the consciousness of the power and to let this be my one desire, my one desire, the most important fact of my life, that I am counting on the power, that I am not sleepwalking anymore. Oh, I can still do it, of course, but the invitation is there. Claim the power, claim the power. Call on God from the bottom of my socks. Ask him to be part of my life today. And sobering away, I just have this, quiet, steady sense of believing that this one day sober is God, big fat elephant in the room, so to speak, that he's going to work this out for me. I am <laughs> just kind of goofy and just making it, bumbling along one step in front of the other, but I have these clear-cut directions in 164 pages, and I have all of you great people everywhere reminding me, keeping me in conversation, in connection with you, with God, the crucial key to recovery as I barely understand anything about it. So that um, I pray, I pray to God right there at the beginning, of course, and then all through my day, I need this reconnecting to the consciousness, to the power. This is a big, big house. I playfully call it Buckingham Palace Grim. And to get it, because it is, and to get anywhere, there are all of these corridors. You could just as easily use a bicycle to get around this place. And so I take those corridors, especially as the cue, as the cue for me to call upon the name of God. I'm here in the office working, I call upon his name. I want to continuously develop that vital sixth sense of God consciousness. And friends, I take this to be his gift that everything I desire, everything I ask in prayer is his gift to me already, his inspiration, so to speak. It's kind of a, I say this respectfully and reverentially, it's kind of a setup that God has me in. He inspires me to ask for his graces. How can I best serve? Thy will be done. I'm no longer running the show. Uh, what else? Give me the opportunity to help the next person. Keep me in your protection and care. What can I do for the person who is still suffering? I want these thoughts to go with me constantly, but they're thoughts that God gave me to begin with. And so I I feel cocooned in his care, of course, and taken up with it and, and really just kind of in, enjoying the whole mystery, the whole mystery of sobriety. Beyond my wildest dreams, the opportunities that have come to me as a sober guy on duty and an active member of Alcoholics Anonymous, what I get to do, whom I get to meet, to, to help and interact with my world, is huge today and just keeps on growing, knocks my socks off in ways that I, I can hardly comprehend. So I'm not gonna mess with success by 
goodness by golly. I'm going to keep this really simple. Keep that sense of God consciousness going. Let me be shown through the day what my next step is to be. I don't know. I mean, there's a certain routine here and all, but there's also plenty, plenty of surprises. People calling in, uh, 35 brother monks to, uh, to love and to serve and to appreciate differences, to get along, to cooperate, to get out of self. And I have a lot of praying to uh, ensure that that keeps on going because I'm alcoholic. I could disconnect quite easily and be lost and crazy and, and goofy as could be. So I renew conscious contact with a, with a quiet fervor because I know it's my best move. I have all these chances to go to center. This is my little mantra. I ask God to take me to center. Why? Because page 55, we like to make this hand signal down here. 55 takes me to deep down within where spirit dwells in gravitas, in love and peace. And when I come to that place where the spirit dwells, I am going to be enlightened with peace and love. I am going to be fired up all anew to be God's guy on duty here in a way that is exciting, is beautiful, wants me to take his love into every encounter as best as I can, as often as I can, as completely as I can, because I'm a sober guy on duty and I need to show that I'm grateful for this. It's Gratitude frees my thoughts and, and, and enlightens my actions. And, it, and that's the point, of course. It has to be the thankfulness and the wonder have to be translated into my giving back and to my next step and to my being God's guys. So that's what drives me and uh, what takes me forward. Uh, I want his protection and care to be manifest through me. I do care. I'm I'm God's guy and I have this chance to be transformed by his grace. But the avenue, the key to it, of course, is conscious contact, is 11 step to claim the power, to ask to know his will and so on. So my very life as ex-problem drinker depends on this new set of principles connecting with the power. I have to click it on, so to speak. It's just about as easy as that pick up the spiritual toolkit of 12 steps and have a super fantastic day in sober service. Just kind of a little funny thing with me, but whenever anyone refers to a bad day in sobriety, I'm, I'm dumbfounded. I, I don't argue or debate the point, but it's just incomprehensible to me. That just doesn't add up in my thinking. So I have this sense of the power and, uh, the power to carry it out, to carry out what? The love, the service, the presence, the action. What does that look like for me, friends, in these last few minutes? Let me tell you what I think it looks like. Finding the power lights up this old boy a lot. <laughs> it softens and illuminates my every interaction, reminds me to keep my sober reading glasses on, in case of any disturbance or speed bump, so to speak, in, in the day, I can be sober, considerate, and helpful regardless of what's going on. That's to say anything seemingly untoward, anything that anybody says or does that might want to disturb me, it need not. If I'm spiritually centered, emotionally independent, as they say, I don't need to react except with love and presence and power. I needn't be porky or indignant, but I can interpret whatever goes on from the depths of the spirit with an awakened soul that says, take a new attitude. Whatever's going on here is beautiful. I can draw from its lessons. I can grow from this. I can skate by conflicts and the circus clowns and the distractions are, well, great, just pleasant amusement. Uh, I'm a grateful, sober guy. I'm not going to get stuck on that. Anything less is to squander the hours that might have been worthwhile. And at 73 years old, I have this sense that I can't squander a minute. I don't want to. I want to 
pack it into the stream of life. And I do that by claiming the power in step 11. The power energizes me and reminds me how far God has brought me down the road on the day at a time basis, miraculous daily reprieve. And I've got to show up for this and show him the gratitude for these satisfying miraculous times in my life that he will pull this jumbled ragtag guy together in ways that I certainly can't and will somehow make this story complete in his plan, in his time. I don't have to play God by worrying, by judging, by trying to arrange the players in the drama of life. And in fact, when I'm connected, when I'm spiritually attuned, the drama of life, the players, the lights, the action, the it's just great. I love it. It's comedy. It's drama. It's beautiful. And I can't get enough of the deal. Carrying the power, power to carry it out, lets me pick up the pace of life, encourages me to cut everybody a lot of slack who are surely doing their bestest and are just here to help me practice the AA code of love and tolerance. Carrying the power helps me deflate the ego, keeps me right size, fastens my soul to God and brings about a sense of comfort, ease, abundance, joy. I'm no longer running the show, thy will be done. How can I serve thanks and praise? If I ever had a coat of arms, God forbid, that would be my motto, thanks and praise. So for today, willing to let go of my old ideas, like I think I know what's best so that I can pray, God, show me, show me the way, show you show me what's best. I'm determined to be eager to extend the arms of forgiveness and kindness to show respect and understanding to all whom I meet for their viewpoints and shortcomings. I, the grace of God reminds me to pause when agitated, to choose my words carefully and with a sense of loving kindness because every word counts for this sober guy. And I want them to be God's words. I want them to be God's actions and so on. And, and so I keep my eyeglasses clean, thanks to the power. I remember the mission, the direction. I keep a, a sense of letting go of my obstinacy, my defiance, my sensitivity, any morbid reflections about the past. They, they just don't have place for me when I'm claiming the power and I'm living in the moment, striving to be God's guy. I'm all in for acceptance, for uh, contentment, for joy, for freedom, for thanking God from the bottom of my heart for this one day sober. So that's what 11 step means for me, good friends and, and fellow trudgers. Um, I'm on it for today and only for today and living the dream in ways I never could have imagined, <clears throat> but have this sense that my whole life is being drawn into a, into a fullness, into a place of miracle that only he knows that he will bring to perfection. I keep doing what you encourage me to do. And I've got a quiet, steady sense that everything is going to be all right. Thanks for letting me share, sending sober Kentucky love to each and every one of you. And uh, it's your turn now. Thank you, love you. Philip, are you calling on me? Yeah, I am, yeah. There you go. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Brother Luke. Um, it's a, it's a really a, a message of hope that I'm hearing, which makes me emotional. You know, I feel I feel the love in the in the room and um what a gift of this this um this fellowship you know coming from this 
life of isolation and and you know um, into this into the light that I feel and um, you know I, I feel inspired by your talk and uh, um, I just I just want to take it all in but um, I I um, I really appreciated what you had to say thank you. Thank you so much, Nathan. Appreciate it. Joyce Orman, please come on up. Hi, Luke. <laughs> uh, it's good to hear you share. You know, the main thing is um, uh, my name is Joyce and I am an alcoholic. That's, for, that's, that's the first thing. That's the first thing. And uh, it, it's good to see you again. It's good to hear you. And, uh, and I'm glad I was able to get here quick. I, um, I see you on Facebook and I see how many people that you help. And, and, um, and that's what it's all about in my book is um, staying sober and helping the next alcoholic achieve sobriety. That is, that's so important to me. Um, knowing that my higher power is deep down inside of me is something that I was never taught before. I had to come to Alcoholics Anonymous to learn that. And uh, you said it so beautifully that that's where you go, that that's where you go to get your energy, to get your power it is uh, deep down inside of you. And uh, I'm going to remember that. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to share. Thank you, Joyce. George Melkor. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm George Melkor, and I am an alcoholic. And Luke, thank you so very much for your share. I, uh, it resonated with me on, uh, on many levels. Um, like you, at one time, uh, I was Brother George. I was a member of a religious order. And you know, I remember going through the motions. I was spiritually asleep, but I really thought I was awake. And for many years, you know, I, uh, I kept putting one foot in front of the other, not knowing or understanding what this hole in my heart was all about. But it wasn't until I came to Alcoholics Anonymous that I was able to define that hole and that it was God-shaped. But it was because of sponsorship and service and surrender and prayer that I discovered a new relationship with a power greater than myself. For a long time, my God was a Santa Claus God, and then he became my CEO for many years. But then alcoholism was introduced into the picture and it all went away. And you know, from a life of, of security and, and thinking I had everything that was gonna make me happy for the rest of my life to a life of uh, being destitute and homeless and unemployable on the streets of Washington, DC, I finally came to the point where I was willing to surrender one more time. And it's because of of your message of hope and beauty and peace that I have a life that I have today. On September 1st of 1984, I sat in my mom's living room and I hope that's my last blackout because a man reached out to me and I told him, Don, this is George, I think I'm ready. And his words to me were, I am so delighted. I had no idea what he meant. I had no idea what it meant. What was in store for me. And so I just wanted to say this, that I'm so grateful that today I'm not on the outside looking in anymore, that I participate in my recovery. I pick up both oars and, and I participate through prayer and meditation and service and listening to men like you, Luke. Thank you so very much. Thank you, George. Thank you for your share. Dina T, come on up. 
Hello, everybody. I'm being an alcoholic. Thank you so much for the meeting. And uh, Brother Luke, thank you so much for your message. I love it when you said what makes the uh, sobriety glisten. And that takes a little bit of shining or a lot of shining. It's just it's just wonderful to be sober and to be um to be in that recovery where doing the work you I, I love bringing um I think about it as like um getting my god suit on or or tough on because I have arrows coming at me all day. I, I work with people all day. And so it's nice to be to be that person that um if it I I am a uh, um I'm proof that there is a God and that there is love. And so that's what I try to go with all day. And thank you. Thank you, Dina. Back to F. Come on up. Turn your video on if you can, if you don't mind. Thank you so much. Hi, can you see me? Yes, yes. you can hear me. Hi, this is Fatu F. I am a... Uh... An alcohol, a recovering alcoholic, and multiple addictions uh, in Dakar, Senegal, and uh, it's well. When you said if it's past midnight and I need to ask God to direct me, <laughs> well, it's past midnight here, and I asked God to direct me, and He was like, "Yes, you need to be writing your gratitude." So I was doing that while I listened, and then He was like, "You need to share your miracles. Do not go to bed without sharing." And everything you said, I understood intuitively. Because after my first year um, in the, for me, it was after my first year in the money program. I've been going to all of them. I'm part of spiritual gangsters. Um, but once I got there and I crossed the one year mark, what you described happened to me. And it literally started two weeks ago, where I felt like some sort of gigantic love and flow of energy took over my life and just started to do things. And I felt like um, a channel, like I feel like a channel. And that's the best way I can describe it. And yes, I did not know I was sleepwalking. I didn't know. I, I was here for 14 months and I kept thinking that I was doing recovery. But when that experience happened, and I yes, I kept coming, of course. I didn't, even when it felt very, very, very um, painful, I kept coming. But once that happened, I realized I was asleep, exactly what you described. And right now, in the space of two weeks, like you read a passage about what would take months, you know, takes less time, something like that in the big book. Well, in the space of two weeks, I have received a vision to go to a world service conference for which I'm fundraising for an amount of money. I have, I, it takes me, you know, five months to earn in my in my sleepiness um and i have received uh, my vision for earning and it's happening just people helping saying come here do this do that and then my husband who has not talked to me in a year and a half suddenly said oh i'm coming to senegal and i'll do this and this and that and that and that and that and i'm like yes the 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 the, the, the higher power has taken over and it's very scary. Every day I'm like, are you kidding me? I can't do that, God. That is too hard. And he's like, no, it's not hard. Just stay in step 11 with me, step 10, 11, and 12. And I just, I mean, for me, like, I don't know how to describe it. It's just, it's just incredible. And um, I'm happy to connect. And Oh, and yeah, the assignment, the, the calling. So I went from like having goals to having a calling. And the calling was like, well, you're going to be the first black woman who represents Africa at, the, at this world conference that's, that's about to happen. And I said, how is this going to happen? And it's, like, it's happening. And it's been literally a week. And I have like gone through like mm, pages of documents and so many meetings and so many new people I had never seen. And I was just like, ah. It's clear it's not on my own power that's how i know if i'm awake or i'm asleep and i just wanted to share that and say thank you for your service and everybody who's here sorry lisa come on up i thought i was unmuted Oh, no worries. 
I'm alcoholic. My name is Lisa. Luke, thank you very, very much. My goodness, when the reminder to claim that power, you know, the things that I know deep within me, but don't always practice. And you came to us tonight as just a reminder of a loving God and a father to his children. And, you know, being a parent too, it's just, you know, when when your kids come to you and they ask for something, you just want to give it to them. And it was a wonderful reminder that our my Heavenly Father, my God loves me and he wants to be asked and the nearness and just just a loving gift. And all around, you just filled my heart and soul. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Amanda, come on up. My name is Amanda and I'm an alcoholic. Um, thank you very much, Luke. I could relate to everything that you said. And when you kept saying, I'm 73 and this, and I'm, I'm thinking I'm 73 and this, and I'm 73 and I don't wanna waste any more time in life. I want to live my life the way that God would have me to live it. I don't wanna judge, I don't wanna criticize. And I kept thinking about all of that that that's where I am today. And I just truly know that I am on a different plane, a different level and a different relationship with God because I invite God in. I sit down every morning and I invite God in. And it's not something I will be, I'm 39 years sober. And it's not something that um, I started doing a long time ago. I had this little, five minute meditation, 10 minute and whatever. And as a result of something that happened in my life that was real, I, when it happened, thought it was real, real terrible. My daughter had cancer, my only child, and she died. And I was real angry with God. And I thought, why? And, but now I'm able to see where God taking her has brought me closer to him. And I sit down every morning and meditate and I sit down every morning with this overwhelming desire to do what God wants me to do and throughout the day I ask him and it just blows my mind that something so horrible it seems can bring me so much closer to God can bring me to a place where I want to be his representative I want to be his child and I am so grateful for that. So when you were sharing about being 73 and just living for today and all of that, I could feel that. I love the energy and the light that I feel from your eyes. So I am so grateful that I was here to hear you tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Mary Kate, come on up. Hi. I'm Mary Kay. I'm an alcoholic. And um, by the grace of God and the grace of God coming through the people in these rooms, especially here tonight and you, Brother Luke, today I have five years. And it seems like an ordinary day until I came to this meeting and heard your words and was reminded. Um, I too am touched with what you've shared tonight. Um, my father-in-law just recently passed and we're dealing with all of that and there's so many mixed emotions and in the past I wouldn't have been able to feel those emotions I would have wanted to numb them I'm still a little afraid but um I don't want to drink and um something that you said about reconnecting with the light that was born within us that we were born with um I really connected to that I I've heard others speak about, you know, I think I grew up with religion and God was this beautiful person to me. And then all of a sudden, um, the God of my understanding was different and um, it is now changing again. And I was wondering if you could talk any more to how you reconnect to that kind of innocence that that pure light when we 
you know, we're children. Um, and how do you get there? If you wouldn't mind talking about that. Thank you. Ah, thanks, Mary Kate. I'm all about going forward, the whole story embraced, loved, maybe not understood, wouldn't have signed up for this or that, but just a, a sense of trust and belief that God had the narrative all along. And so, yeah, the light different now. Yeah, um, something probably too mysterious to quantify, uh, but thank you. Yes, the purity of the child, the child of God, something maybe so deep down it can't even be perceived, but yes, I'm with you. That, that has got to be here for us undoubtedly. Thanks, thanks for everything and, and best love to you on the journey. Thank you, Mayor Kate. Roman D. Come on up. Please turn hey, your brother. Hey, okay. how you doing? Brother Luke, thank you so much for your share. I really appreciate it. I have a question for you. Um, hold on, I have a pop-up. During your journey in recovery and um, surrendering and turning it over, um, have you ever deviated? Was there any anger? I, I mean, I see so much joy in your eyes. And um, I just want to know if you ever had a moment in your recovery that you were angry at God, that you didn't, are this power greater than yourself? And if so, how did you get back into the sunlight of the spirit? That's my question. Thank you. Thanks, Roman. Nobody around here who knows me is too worried the guy's going to get too good too quick. <laughs> <laughs> of course, brother, a whole spectrum of emotion and, uh, and spiritual tools to keep reasonably focused and together by all means, uh, the uh, spiritual toolkit right at hand because I sure as heck need it. How about you? <laughs> Funny guy. Wonderful. Thank you, Roman. Uh, Cherry, come on up. Hi, I'm Sherry, an alcoholic. Um, thanks so much for sharing sharing your experience today. That was awesome. Um, I have a similar question. Um, like the person who just asked a question is, um, ha in situations where you might have pulled away from a higher power or um, oftentimes, um, I guess, um, when we're rather than our, um, let me see, you know how we're supposed to pause when indecisive or um, pause, those pauses. Oh, she might have, uh, we've lost her. Okay, so we'll, why don't we do this? Why don't we continue on with Doug? Doug, come on up, ask your question, and we'll get Sherry back when she logs back in. Oh, yes, okay. Hello, I'm a grateful recovered alcoholic. My name's Doug, up here just north of Toronto. And, and thank you, Brother Luke. That was that was very inspiring. You're, you're a delight to listen to, I mean, you, you know, and, and I love the way that you, you claim the power, you know, uh, and you repeatedly said that, and I don't hear many other speakers using that, uh, that phrase, you know, I first encountered it with, in uh, Emmett Fox uses it quite often. And, and, you know, I see that that is true, that if I don't claim the power, I'm not really carrying the message. I'm not carrying the message of recovery. I'll be always recovering if I can't claim the power and stand forward, stand on that, 
stand up for God, then I'm not doing quite what I'm supposed to be doing. It's, uh, it's been an effort to overcome myself because I'm always worried about what other people are judging me. <laughs> I believe they do because I judge them. <laughs> but I'm, I'm passing through that phase now where it, it really isn't important to me. Um, my effect on them is important to me. However, their response or their reaction doesn't seem to be as 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 uh, as dangerous to me anymore. It seems like I'm safe and protected as long as I'm on my beliefs that God will pass me the power. And the only thing I have problem is with trying to convince other people that I can claim the power because it's oh uh, it's not an often used phrase. In our uh, big book, it says. Uh, we claim progress, not perfection. And uh, I think this is a stumbling block for a lot of people. Can you explain a little more how, how you come to find it? In my life, actually, quickly, it's like my life is lived forward, but it, it's explained by looking backwards. So the following morning, usually, when I, I do a little bit of meditation, I understand what happened the night before when I looked through God's eyes. So thank you. That's all I got. Are you able to unmute uh, there you go. Uh, sure. I, I I think Doug covered it himself. I, I don't know that I have anything more there. Uh, we ask God, we keep it as simple and as clear as child to loving father, ready, eager to help. I I just for me is as clear as as that. Thank you, Luke. Thank you for your share and thank you for answering all the questions. Actually, um, there's a, a question in the chat. I'll just read it out to you, Luke, and then we'll see. Uh, would he say that he, in his experience as a music director, that music is a form of prayer and meditation? If so, in what way? Oh, yeah. You're getting yeah. the easy ones. <laughs> This, uh, this is a house of praise, 175 years, seven times a day. And I get to uh, do this little part in it now. Thank God it's a sober song, which makes a bit of difference. And uh, so I come in as servant and uh, it's not as for me to uh, try to make it go this way or that, but just to be there as animator and uh, as encouragement, as backup, so to speak, accompaniment, and to be present, prepared, and uh, ready to try to uh, in bring this forward in a way uh, I, I want them to, I try to wake them up a little bit, to be honest. Let's, let's get this tempo going here, fathers and brothers, and, uh, and life is a sweet song. It's something remarkable, even, happens when we come together at the Abbey for song. The uh, sum is greater than the total of its parts. Did I get that right? Uh, something happens that it's just so much more than ourselves, our poor lives come together in, in a way that um, is phenomenal. I can hardly believe it myself, let alone that we get to do this seven times a day. So sober guy on duty, when that bell rings, this boy is ready. Thank you, Luke. That concludes.